Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Bill Lester. I'm with University of Florida IFAS Extension Service here in Hernando County. And welcome to this week's virtual plant clinic. Gosh, we have kind of a crowd here on the screen today. Uh, I have my regular co-host, Lily Browning. Good morning, Lily. How are you? Good morning, Bill. How are you? I'm just great. Um, and we have our master gardener here, who's in the same building as I have, just a different room over there. Bernie. So good morning, Bernie. How are you? Good morning, Bill. I'm just doing great. You know great. what I was I'm glad looking, to hear that. You know what I was looking at is our names. Dr. Bill Lester, Lily Browning, Bernie. <laughs> All At least he hasn't figured out names. emojis or anything. So. <laughs> what was that, Bernie? All the greats have one name. They, that's Madonna. true. <laughs> Cher. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there you go. There Rasputin. you go. Rasputin. <laughs> Gar. <laughs> Okay, and we have at least somebody on here today. We have a couple of regulars. Yep. And see, Bernie even has his fans. He just he needs just need one man. Name. He's just Bernie. She understands. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning from Pinellas. Maggie. Or Maggie Chili Beanie. <laughs> Good to hear from y'all. Glenda. Glenda has some good news. She has a big, beautiful blackberry harvest. Compliments of our blackberry class that we had last year and the blackberry plants. So that's great. Glad to hear that. Um, blackberries can be a little tough to grow. They're, they get quite a few fungal diseases, so you always have to kind of keep an eye on them. And if they start to get an outbreak, you need to be out there spraying with a fungicide. They will grow naturally here in the woods, yeah. just not not in August, like up north. It's in June. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, my mother uh, neighbor, you know, knew where to find some in the woods, so she would go blackberry picking um, when I was growing up in Masaryk Town. Now, I believe where they went at that time is now referred to as Lee Mills Boulevard. <laughs> So, so, you know, progress. Will blackberries grow in North Florida? Why not? They grow up yeah, north, yeah, they grow yeah. in Florida. Oh, they will, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they'll, My daughter, grow, they'll grow further south of here. I mean, they're not going to do really well in Miami and Homestead. That's a little too tropical down there. I love yeah. the names. Uh, most of the blackberries seem to have Indian, Indian names. Indian Navajo name. and yeah. Navajo. And and Navajo, yes. I just told my daughter that because she asked me, will blackberries grow here? She's buying a house um, in Citrus County. And I said, yeah, I mean, they grow naturally. And then there are the hybridized versions, the thornless versions. I said mm -hmm. and they all have Indian names. <laughs> but she knew of someone selling them. I said, it's worth a try. Said, you know, good luck getting them before the birds do, but could be fun to try. So, yeah, all the varieties with the Native American names are all developed. I'm not sure if it's just by one researcher in or Arkansas, isn't it? In Arkansas? University yeah. of Arkansas, yep, yeah. So, there are varieties that grow really, really well in Arkansas, and our weather is similar, but not the exact same. Obviously, Arkansas gets colder in the winter. Yeah. It's hot and steamy in the summer, just like it does here. So growers here in Florida and Hernando County are always experimenting with the different varieties to see which one is going to grow best right on their farm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. where they and are. the ones they grow, those blackberries are like that big. They're... Well, you know, the ones that do the best are the old fashioned ones with thorns. They're the most productive and they get the biggest, best berries. But they have thorns. Mm. Miserable thorns. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thornless ones are much easier to work with and deal with and pick and harvest. And you probably don't want to have the thorny ones for a U-pick operation. 
No, I don't think you of, could. I think that's a liability there. A lot of bloody children who have been out there trying to pick. Okay, you know, what are you and, taking? You're taking Bernie's parts now. <laughs> <laughs> I beat Bernie to it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah pump motors like the thornless ones, obviously better, but they're not quite as productive, but they're still productive. I mean, they can still do really well here. We have lots of uh, Blackberry U-Pick operations right here in Hernando County. Yep. And of course, there's Teresa with a publication on growing blackberries in Florida. And yes, there are thornless varieties mm -hmm. of blackberries, and then the old-fashioned varieties that have thorns. Let's talk about how to propagate frog fruit. Stand there and wait. <laughs> it's going to come to your yard. She passes great patches of it on her morning walks with her dog. Just, you know, depending on where it is, don't take it out of somebody's yard. It's, it's on the yeah. right away or whatever. Just, you know, take your little hand trowel, get a little bit of it up and start putting it in your yard. It should take off. Basically, dig little plugs. Yeah. And put them in your yard. Keep them watered until they get established, and it's going to spread. It it runs. I never put it in my yard. It it was there. You know, nature put it there. <laughs> so. Mine came with the house. I got I have a big patch in the backyard that died back really, really bad with the dry weather we had this spring. So I'm hoping it's all going to come back. I don't know yet and a big patch out in the front yard. Mm -hmm. And three types of tiny butterflies. Love it. Your buckeye, your white peacock, and your phaon crescent. Yes, and I, all... I, I, my backyard would have tons of you, the white peacocks. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and they're all about quarter size little butterflies. It's like a miniature world for those miniature flowers, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's great. You have all these people that spend all this time and money and effort. They want to build a butterfly garden, and I have a beautiful butterfly yard, and I don't do anything to it. It just it just happens. On the it's other side, house. on the other side of that, there's people who spend all the time and money to like get rid of all these weeds, and they then they wonder why they don't have. Uh huh the butterflies well, well they because... spray for caterpillars and they wonder why they don't have butterflies <laughs> yes i and went on a uh, butterfly walk up at chinsega and uh did you have to do this on the on the driveway do you do this and, in a butterfly walk <laughs> yeah and, and <laughs> after two hours we had only gone about 50 feet i was amazed at how many little butterflies there are and and unless you own a, a pair of binoculars with that'll focus to three or four feet you you just never really see those things you're you're old people you're not looking for things like that you're looking for a big butterfly flying around and and these beautiful things are uh dime size down on on the flowers that you don't notice over there in the grass and uh, I'm, I'm just amazed. People should need to, to get more of these short focus binoculars and, and and take a look at all those little butterflies. There, there's an amazing number in the state. The shortest, what, the what shortest bike walk I ever took, the shortest hike I ever took, the shortest and longest hike I ever took was looking for native plants. I don't think we went 50 feet in two hours. <laughs> People, you know, if you were with a bunch of native plant people, you're not getting far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was great. They pointed out every, and then there's the arguments of what they really are or what their native Latin name is. <laughs> and and the same way with fungus. It, it's, it's amazing yeah. how many little funguses are out there that you don't even notice. Yes. Mm -hmm. My nephew works with fungi in Washington State. He's getting his master's degree in mycology and I watched him on Zoom do his dissertation um, defense and his project, uh, they're working on um, wildlife overpasses there in Washington State. So they used 
a couple of those sites and maybe a couple others in which they brought, um, you know, mushroom spores to inoculate the, the dirt that was already there and brought in some native plants. And, you know, to see how that brings more wildlife and affects the overall ecosystem. So it was a very proud ant to hear him <laughs> talk about that and talked about planting native plants and planting elderberries. And um, in one of the sites, they got one berry, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, and, and then, you know, the, um, the more that what that does is attract the wildlife to those overpasses or to areas where they won't become harmed. And it's kind of a neat, neat project going on there. I noticed the uh, Highway 50 extension across the state, they're putting in one overpass uh, for wildlife uh, about halfway between uh, here and 436 or whatever it is, the road that goes up to Webster. Oh, and, uh, through the green swamp, you mean? Through the green swamp. Yeah. But at least they're putting in one. That's, that's better yeah. than having nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we, have a, we have a question on here. Well, we have a couple questions. We do. And it looks like people are just answering each other's questions. So thanks. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> but what we got a question about pushbeans. Oh. With, hey, where did that question go? We there. got a question about Sorry. bush beans with powdery mildew. And can I eat the string beans or should I trash them? It's really common. Green beans, yellow beans, bush beans, whatever their season is pretty much coming to an end what is this june 8th now so they're going to crash and burn from diseases from insect pests that are going to come along any day now um so go ahead and pick the beans you can eat the beans they're just fine and plan on this crop of beans ending really really soon because spring gardening season is ending literally this weekend and if we go up to the memo went out the memo went out you're done <laughs> yeah yeah guys you're i'm sorry I, we, you can argue with that and are there exceptions to that sure there's there's always someone i can grow tomatoes all summer long <clears throat> well almost none of us can really and on you're gonna start porch. putting resources on my your, porch yeah do you really need to well so if you're growing green beans or yellow beans or pole beans out in your garden, their season is coming to an end. You're really not going to be able to keep them going much longer. But powdery mildew does not make the actual beans dangerous to eat. But if you Obviously, go to Hernando, yeah, if you go to Hernando County Government YouTube, there is mm -hmm. a new um, program on there called Eating in the Heat by Dr. William Lester, who talks about what kind of edible plants you can grow during the hot, steamy summers. Do you mean this Hernando County Government YouTube channel? If you go to sure. YouTube and look in the search box up at the top, type in Hernando County Government, that one? Yep, that one. Okay, great. <laughs> You'll find that, uh, that Dr. Lester just did. You'll also find the class we did yesterday some like it hot which was about mostly ornamental flowers that do stand the heat and then bill did a little mini version of the edible plants that you can um you know that you can grow in the heat and, and we have hot tomatoes and green beans <laughs> and we have recorded classes from either last summer or the summer before that on growing sweet potatoes and growing calabasa or cuban pumpkin and one on ginger and turmeric and all of those do just fine this time of year mm -hmm. but your green beans are about to not do fine at all however i think people are pretty much immune to powdery mildew that, that is not one of the things that actually affects humans so unless yeah it won't, it, won't, it won't make us sick if, I've if, never if gotten you've got it. a lot of chlorophyll uh, in your body, then that might be a problem. Yes, for say. Most people, that's not a problem. No, I don't think I've ever gotten it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, here we got threads of people asking questions about mm -hmm. answering them birds, for each other. Off the blueberries and the blackberries. bird is the netting is the correct answer. I mean, yes, you're going to have to use netting to keep the birds off. Mm -hmm. And of course, everything that we mentioned, Teresa is looking up and throwing in University of Florida fact sheets. They have information, technical information on all this. And probably that fact sheet says that, you know, you can't grow them in the summer. What vegetables are you planting this week? That says Facebook user. I'm thinking his name is Corey. <laughs> you know, I finally got around to planting the seeds for Georgia Bulldog uh, pumpkin, which is up and looking good. I planted seeds for yard long beans, which is an Asian warm season kind of tropical vegetable. It's a type of bean that binds. And the beans aren't one yard, like three feet long. They're about 12, 18 inches long. They're long and skinny and very good. And sweet potatoes. I actually started a bunch of sweet potato slips, and I'm going to be able to fill the one garden bed that I wanted to fill with sweet potatoes. At the very end, I had a patch that I needed to clear out. I'm just, I've just been really behind clearing it out. And I got Biden's Alba or Beggar Tick or Spanish Needle, whatever you want to call it. And it's like between knee high and waist high at this point. It's full grown, you know, um, four feet by eight feet or so. I looked at it. I thought, it's going to be a lot of work clearing that out. And, you know, there's so many bees and so many oh, pollinators yes. and probably so many beneficials in it. I'm just going to leave it here and I'm going to experiment and leave it here. I'm going to try to keep most of the other weeds out. I'm going to have, I'm not going to let it spread and take over the whole garden, but I'm going to leave that patch there. So it attracts the pollinators. To yes. attract pollinators, to attract good things to the garden. See how it works. Well, they say you can eat the Biden's Alba as well. Yeah. The, the tender new leaves. Yeah. Barney, I, th I think that's one of the native plant society type things. One of the things you can eat that's probably the my most despised plant uh, out of the list <laughs> that, that's one that if you have one plant next year you have eight thousand well of course and you have dogs low low to the ground dogs <laughs> little pick up stickies yeah i have a love-hate relationship with them i just try to keep them under control because you if you want a picture of a pollinator keep some Spanish needle, you'll go out there, you'll get pictures of pollinators. But it's, yeah. it's aggressive. It spreads, so you have to keep it under control. But every every native bee and fly and everything loves it. You can stand there and yeah. look at a patch and see every insect that you have in the neighborhood visiting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and no, I don't side dress with manure. I really don't have access to manure. I've used black cow before. But that's sterilized. There's no food safety issues with that. But using raw manure, there's always potential food safety issues when you're growing edibles. And I just don't want to go there. Yes. And I would like to comment. No one mentioned poop until Corey did. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. Well, I'm, I'm still trying to, to scroll down bit by bit here. Lee is morning, with us this morning. Good morning, Lee. And cool season crops don't make it through the tomato apocalypse. The four riders of the tomato apocalypse are. <laughs> Let's see if this is accurate. Heat, yeah. true. Humidity, true. Daytime and nighttime, just constant mm -hmm. humidity. Insects, true. Cool season crops, if you grow that like kale, grow it in the middle of winter when you're supposed to, no bugs. A few caterpillars, maybe almost no bugs. Push it into about April, you will see um, Colorado potato beetles. I've seen on it before. Harlequin bugs, which I don't normally see anywhere. Harlequin bugs love kale, but after it gets hot. So don't grow kale now. Grow it in the winter. And disease, both fungal bacteria. Yep, that's true. That's accurate. <laughs> that's fantastic. I need to make a graphic. Yeah, I was just thinking that somebody needs to draw that. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and, and copy this one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna find an artist. Yeah, I'm getting some good ideas about this. Yeah, I'm gonna find an artist and we're gonna make a graphic, I think. Can you draw, Corey? Send us the graphic of it. And of course, somebody has to jump in about my kale is still growing and I have <laughs> large tomatoes growing. Your kale can grow through the summer. It's just you're going to have diseases, you're going to have insects. The kale is going to be, I think, lower quality. I think those cool season leafy things grown in the cooler weather taste better. She says, my purple kale has aphids. My curly kale has non-aphids. Aphids love kale once you get past a certain point in the spring. Mm -hmm. You want to pick that kale, take her inside to eat it, and literally have to take a paint scraper and scrape the aphids off of it. You have at it. You go for it. I try to just take the laziest possible way out, at least I'm being honest, and get as much food as I can. So I'm going to go with the calabasa, the sweet potatoes, things like that during the heat of summer. I'm not going to kill myself for kale. I grow plenty. I grow more kale than I can eat all winter long. So I get my kale fix. Most what if you have... Do you guys like, like kale? Yeah. Kale's all right. Burning? But, I mean, I don't think I eat it like by itself. It has to be mixed in with other stuff. But you can get um, what if you have like a really bright, sunny room that is at, you know, your 73 or whatever your house is at? Could you grow these type of things inside? You could. And a lot of people grow hydroponically inside. You can grow... you. In any kind of protected agriculture, you can control things more. So if you own a greenhouse, if you keep it buttoned up and the door closed and try to keep things out, you can control it more. That's when if you have an outbreak of aphids, you can buy beneficial mm -hmm. insects and release them in a greenhouse. They're going to stay in the greenhouse and they're going to hopefully solve your problem. There's all kinds of stuff you can grow in the bedroom closet, Lily. <laughs> Yeah. Grow lights, yes. I don't think you need to hide it anymore. <laughs> so. Antelopes, squash, cucumbers, things that are especially sensitive to diseases outdoors. Indoors, you can control things better. So there's all kinds of stuff you can grow in your bedroom closet if you want. Anne-Marie has a very happy post here. Oh my goodness, I have had 80 pounds of blueberries been picking so much i am dehydrated i think last year half a colander so that's that's, that's great that you had a great year it's been a good year and they're still coming sweet potatoes looking great we're, we're great. happy to hear that yeah where do you live Anne marie i'd be interested to north florida south georgia if i remember correctly oh okay yeah yeah that's great um so see Maggie doesn't oh, mind the thorns. You, you can grow herbs indoors in the bedroom closet. And yes, I've heard <laughs> like the Biden's Alba. Oh, yeah, I have heard that. Yes, they do. And Alicia is one of the people it's showing up as Facebook user off the okay. group. Okay. Um, I don't know how long the um, overpass is <laughs> in Washington State. Um, I don't know if he mentioned, you know, that how long it is. Or, oh, maybe he's asking the one in um, the Green Swamp, Bernie. No, it's um, just over 50, isn't it? it? It's under 50. It's actually an underpass. The... Uh, they raised the entire road okay. uh, about um, uh, probably eight to ten feet in order to build this underpass. And it, it's really a nice thing. I, I wish they had done two or three of them, but like I say, at least one of them is is a uh, improvement, big improvement over none. And uh, is it? 12 miles, I, I would say it's probably 10 miles from, uh, yeah, about maybe 12 miles from the interstate, 10, maybe 10 miles from 301. 
something like that. But uh, so it's in Lake County here. It's it's probably in Sumter County. So, okay, Terrytown, past Terrytown, before Terrytown. Before oh. Terrytown, yeah. If you drive out that way, you'll see the construction. Oh, I know. I've seen plenty of construction, and what concerned me is. It looked like they're cutting the swamp in half and didn't have like, you know, well, I was wondering why they didn't build a causeway or something so that the water could continue to flow. Well, the, uh, the, the river is still there. <laughs> the uh, the uh, River. Yeah, and when it overflows, you know, that's where it goes. So... Anyway, maybe they're putting drainage pipes under the roads or something to help with that. There's there's an overpass over the railroad, and and there's some big pipes or poles sticking up. I guess they're concrete poles uh, that stick up probably uh, 25, 30 feet above the roadbed. And I, I don't know why they're there. They When when they put this thing in, they drove a bunch of piles uh and, and drove them down so that the, the road would go over them. But they left these big tall things, so I don't know what they're there for. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting uh, road construction. It, uh, it was very, very wet. I was amazed that they were able to fill that up and dry everything enough that they could put a road in. But uh, Yeah. I mean, it's the swamp. <laughs> yes. It is. Mm-hmm. We, the whole state was like that 50 years ago or 75 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now they've drained so much of the state uh, that uh, water is, is no longer like it used to be. Uh, the, it, I think it's actually affected the weather. We used to have this thing where we would get these late afternoon showers and it was because the humidity and everything was so high from all these little water spots, water features and swamps that right, right. it was just a, a natural thing. Well, they've, they've dried those up and uh, now the, the weather that we get is more violent than the, the stuff that we used to have. So I think we modified the weather uh, putting in drainage ditches. I'm sure it's not. Yeah. Oh, my husband, the native Floridian, his way of saying it is, well, when everything's paved over, too, that the sky and the ground can't communicate. You know, that's what's changing our weather patterns. And, you know, I think everything does raise the... I'm sorry? So the, I was noticing that uh, somebody commented that their parsley could feed the community. It's uh -huh. growing like crazy. That's one of the things that likes Florida. That, there's a, a plant that just really does well. Some garnishes so for everyone. Enjoy it while you have it. It's <laughs> gonna it's gonna crash and burn also. It's more of a cool season herb crop. You'll get caterpillars, the great big caterpillars, the big swallowtail ones. Yeah. So Bernie was telling us what he's gonna talk about in Burnology later today. Oh yes, I'm going to talk about the uh, new Hernando County fertilizer ordinance uh, for lawns and only lawns. This, this ordinance uh, uh, reduces the amount of time that you have to fertilize the lawn to five months and includes the uh, commercial people. So uh, the uh, spraying of, of liquid uh, nitrogen fertilizers every month for eight or nine months a year is going to come to a halt. It may only be five months, but uh, it, it does give people an opportunity to switch over to a slow release granular fertilizer, which is much, much healthier for the lawn. Uh, it's going to uh, put the uh, commercial people on the same footing as the homeowner so that everybody's going to be doing the same thing. It's going to eventually reduce the amount of nitrogen in our rivers, uh, specifically the Wikiwaki river which is a, a big problem uh, people don't understand that lawn fertilizers are the second biggest point source of, of pollution that we have in the county uh, second only to uh, septic systems so 
and and the county has passed new rules on the septic systems to improve that situation. So uh, the uh, lawn problem is about 25, it's 22 or 23%, something like that, of all the pollution. And it's basically because we put down fertilizer, the plants aren't absorbing. So all that pollution is actually money that was being wasted and thrown away. So uh, maybe this, this new rule, uh, although people will grumble, is going to actually benefit them a lot more than they realize. Uh, economically, just... it's going to be better, and uh, uh, environmentally, it's going to be better. And I'm not an environmentalist, so uh, mm -hmm. if I think something good it is good environmentally, it probably is because otherwise, I'm one of those people saying, "Leave me alone." So there I am. That's that's what we'll be discussing uh, in my later. I think we found our spokesman for the uh, <laughs> ordinance, and I was just having a vision. Yeah, you got to come with me with this vision for our new spokesman here. Now I was a child in the '70s, right? So what I'm seeing is Bernie standing at the Wikiwachi River, and somebody close by, you know, fertilizing their lawn, and Bernie standing by the river with the tears coming down. <laughs> See, oh. you can be. <laughs> that is going to be our new Don't campaign. Don't do that. No, no. <laughs> uh. So Sharon asks, how is the county going to regulate all the commercial companies? There are some, some, yeah. some uh, penalties involved for yeah. violation of the rule. So, yep. One other thing that, that happens there, I think, was a serious mistake in, in the previous rule, is that now the uh, places that sell fertilizer will have to post the, what the rules are. Uh, and the, the county is supposed to supply those things to be posted, and they need to get that done quickly. But Well, see, that is an, also an issue because I questioned that. I said, okay, county provided signage. I said, that's kind of vague. <laughs> I said, who? <laughs> my boss looked at us. She goes, I guess us. <laughs> you know, I don't know. We don't we don't have that quite ironed out yet. But. Well, see, I envision something like a billboard having to be posted at the entrance to every store that says, if you use fertilizer at the wrong time, God will smash you. Or something like that. No, I think Bernie crying at the river would have more of, a, of an effect because I can tell you, I never litter. <laughs> See, <laughs> that, that commercial had a big effect, so we'll we'll, we'll try it again with Bernie about over fertilizing. <laughs> that will generally end or lower the number of people saying that they didn't know, like the issues we've seen with the um, uh, the irrigation water. requirements. Right. People who are not Hernando County Utility Department customers. Say, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know we have watering days and regulate. Nobody told me. And unfortunately, ignorance of the law and the regulations and rules when code enforcement is giving you a fine is it does not work. And we had yeah. a lot of people. Um, we had um, consultants do a lot of research to come up, you know, with those the new rules, as well as input from many environmental groups. We had meetings with them. And yes, that's what I was going for, whoever answered <laughs> that. <Yeah. laughs> um, um, but yeah, so we had a lot of input. I mean, some of the environmental groups may have wanted things even more strict, but we, we got, you know, one step at a time, it's a whole lot better than it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, the, the thing that was kind of bad was that, uh, you know, the, the old ordinance was you couldn't uh, fertilize till the end of March. And people would come in in February and, and they would tell me about the problems they were having with the lawn. And they'd say, I just fertilized this morning. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I said, you know, you're not supposed to do that. I didn't know that. And, and the truth is, I, I believe the majority of those people really didn't know that there was a fertilizer ordinance. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, 
it's very difficult to publish it, publicize it. The, uh, the county sends things out in the water bill, which does a, a fairly decent job. But there are a lot of people in the county that are on wells that don't get a water bill. And if you don't get a water bill and that's the, the means that the county has chosen to publicize these things, uh, you're never going to find out. We, we um, have it on we have radio. We pay for radio announcements as well on some of the local stations. Um, I think we even looked into, but we didn't seem to get anywhere, um, putting them on some of the, the bus benches, you know, some of our information. Maybe we can look into that information. But billboards aren't a bad idea, but I think the lawyers have them all. But <laughs> billboards are expensive. They are very expensive, yes. Do you guys but, still put stuff in the Tampa Bay Times? I'm not sure. <laughs> we, we might. But you know, there's there's a line between trying to be good stewards of, you know, the county's money as well and get the information out there. And that's I mean, Bill and I, I, we talk about these things all the time, but believe it or not, you know, we're not, you know, uh, except among this group of people here, we're, you know, we can still go to the store and not be thronged by the paparazzi. Nobody knows who we are. And um, we're trying to fix that, though. Yes, we're trying to get the word out there. <laughs> so, okay, I, uh, let's go back uh, to a couple of past comments here. Yes, if you have a greenhouse, it's about 150 degrees in them right now. So yeah. uh, greenhouses are great. You, you really can't do much with them during the summer unless you put shade cloth over the top to cut the amount of sun coming in and you have a really good fan ventilation system. Otherwise, if you walk into it and you feel like you're going to instantly faint, it's probably too hot for your plants, too. Yeah. And Corey has grow lights, and he starts seeds and microgreens on a shelf inside. So it's a great way to start things or grow microgreens all the way from seed through harvest, which is only one, two, maybe three weeks, something like that, because you pick them when they're really small. It works for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Emory is in North Florida, and she had a great – this was a really good year for blueberries, I believe. And, and that's all weather dependent. Some years are really good. Other years are terrible. So enjoy the good years. I had this same thought. I believe this person is referring to when you talked about scraping the aphids off the kale. I oh, yeah. actually thought more protein. I had that same thought. <laughs> but. Okay. Well, that was... Um, oh, we have a question here. Oh, yeah, a ficus question. Yes. Bernie. Bernie, we'll let you handle this one. It's gifted a ficus triangularis, and it looked like I saw a few bugs on it, and I missed it with dead bug Captain Jack. That's a, a, variety, a form of spinosad. I oh, absolutely. It. Spinosad is a wonderful product. Uh, well, but if there's only a few bugs, why would you do anything for a few bugs? It's my question. Cut off where they were or take the bugs off. Spinosad is, is a, a product that uh, is, is, I'm not sure if it's natural or not, but it, it's it's a good product and it's it not is. a sledgehammer type product. It, it's, it's the first product. And the problem you've got is if, if you see a few bugs, why hack up the plant if, if you have, it's like using um, horticultural soap or horticultural oil. Uh, uh, you know, horticultural soap would be a, a good product. If you have Captain Jack and Captain Jack is a spinosad, I would definitely use it. That's as, if you had uh, horticultural uh, soap, I would use that. But th those products are great. I would not go and get my Malathion out or the seven. And, and start with them. That that's that becomes overkill. That's using a sledgehammer to drive tax. So <laughs> you know, and there are a lot of people that like using a sledgehammer to drive tax, but but smarter people, the ones that watch this show, 
know that. They, they, they're not going to do silly things like and that. And we no. also refer to what Bernie is describing as integrated pest management. You're just trying to manage your problem. You're not trying to eliminate every bug from the face of the earth or the face of your property right. or within 100 feet of you because it doesn't work well. I so, don't think so, but I would have to look that up. I think Icus, like Icus generally doesn't like full sun. It's going That's to what like I was thinking. Sun. Yeah. And they really don't talk to you about their sun. It has they to be have, bright. They won't have that dark green color if they're out in too bright of sun, I don't think. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that dark green is an adaptation to the fact that they like it a little shady. They're, they're kind of a shady kind of plant. <laughs> Lee and grows, Lee grows microgreens on her windowsill. So what does one do with microgreens? I have you need them. They're very good for you. Healthy? Do you put them like in smoothies or what do you? Sure. Smoothies, salad. Just put They're them in a bowl. They're good salads. They add a little crunchy to the salad. Is it the same as bean sprouts? Or is it? No, microgreens are things like kale, beets, lettuces, and you grow them so that they sprout and they only grow maybe an inch or so tall, whatever height you want. And then you harvest them and eat them. Let them get a little bit bigger and now they're baby lettuces or baby kale and you cut them off and eat them. If you let them grow to full size, then it's kale, lettuce, beets, whatever. So the microgreens have a lot of the vitamins and stuff in them? Yes. Nutrients? Okay. And... I'm, I'm going to have a class on that, believe it or not. I we have it. somebody here locally who has, who owns, I'm sitting here looking at the business card. It is farmer Amy Harper, and she's very involved with 4-H. That's how we met each other. And she has a small operation called Third Acre Farm. And I need to contact her and the uh, extension agent up in Marion County, who's an expert on hydroponics. And we're going to have a class on the two subjects. So cool. follow us on Facebook. And here, let me go ahead and throw this up here. If you're ever wondering what's coming up, what's going on, what kind of classes Lily's planning on or I am, just go to the link down below, Hernando Extension, all one word, dot com. And you're going to see all of our upcoming classes there. We have a class coming up about the Hernando County Fertilizer Ordinance um, <clears throat> on June 21st at 10 a.m. It'll be a Zoom class. You'll find that on my Facebook as well as should be on Bill's um, or Hernando Extensions Facebook yeah. to find the Zoom link. It'll be about Hernando's new fertilizer rules. And I'll talk about the rules and Bill will talk about how to work within them. So you can have a nice looking lawn that you don't have to pour nitrogen, you know, into. Yeah, I hope nobody's panicking thinking, oh my gosh, my lawn is gonna die and uh, go away mm -hmm. and my life is ruined because now I can't fertilize it every single month of the year. I hope nobody's thinking that. <laughs> if, if you have a cat, be careful on those microgreens because my cat makes them gone in a hurry. <laughs> so we, we ended up, we put a little shelf in the Florida room that, that the cat couldn't get to because the, the darn thing, as, as soon as they hit an inch, they were back down to trim. So, <laughs> cat well, so you see that you can use microgreens on sandwiches, in smoothies, in salads. Uh, it's an interesting garnish. Throw it into omelets or with scrambled eggs. Well, it just sounds cool. It sounds like something anyone could do, even in apartments or very small yeah. places. Or Yeah, very easy. You have to um, have uh, kind of the right tray. Mm -hmm. So that when it gets to be an inch tall, you're able to clip all of them at ground level. There are companies that make mats. So you roll yeah. the mat out, you plant the seeds on the mat. And when it comes up, they, you can literally hold the mat up so it's hanging down and take an electric carving knife 
<laughs> they cut your microgreens right at ground or mat level and harvest them that way. <laughs> so let's roll, let's roll straight from microgreens into poop. Lily, <laughs> you're probably you're probably wondering when we're gonna transition to this. What is it's 1045. It's do we oh, no. Cory asked about manure first. What's the poop on my roses and some of my zinnias? What, what, what is the question? <laughs> Do you want to add some, or are you asking what's wrong with them? Roses? Or, or what's the information or truth on them? Or she went out there and somebody pooped on her roses <laughs> and zinnias and just wonder what it is. We're going to need your, a picture for that yeah, one. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with your zinnias. They should be fine. Uh, Bernie, you want to talk about roses in Florida? Roses in Florida are one of those things where everything that can attack it does. Um, the, oh, there are the droppings. Really, okay. The really easy thing to do with, with roses is to get a bottle, a, a, one of those hand spray bottles of horticultural soap and Stick it by the door, and every time you walk out and walk past the roses, just give them a little squirt. They they attract everything. They attract thrips. They attract any insect that will be there. They attract every fungus known to man. And as long as they are taken care of, they're they're a, a very nice, pretty plant. But uh, care means. That Constant. you need to look at them and find out as soon as something's going and be proactive instead of waiting until they're wilting, which is where I hear from everybody's problem. They, they, they bring something in and it's got seven different insects and four different funguses. And at that point, I'm not sure that you're going to even solve the, save the plant. Uh, you can trim the things back to the end of the year, cut them, put them off above the ground. Uh, they tend to do very well. They come back and, and they produce beautiful blooms. Uh, roses are a, a labor of love. If, if you want something that you can plant it and forget it, do not plant roses. If you want something that uh, is easy to take care of, if you uh, stay on top of them, roses qualify. If you want something that's impossible to take care of, if you ignore Roses qualify. So it, it's a plant for everybody that, that likes to garden. They, yeah, the, you ha it has to be your hobby. It has to be something you love to do every day, pretty much. And the, you will need to spray them with fungicides, especially in the summer. They are going to get black spot disease and whatever all else. Now, what, to, what things might be leaving um, frass or something on her roses and zinnias. Do you have any ideas about that, Bill? Yes. Oh, Bernie does? I do. The, the, the biggest thing for actual poop that you look at is these little guys running around all over the place. The lizards? The lizards. Don't ever overlook the lizards when you're talking about actual pellets. Uh -huh. If you're talking little frass, uh, that's insects. But if you're talking so, actual pellets, you're talking lizards. So then, yeah, if it's little pellets, then they're just using those as structures. They're not. They're not hurting things. Them. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and as a general rule, caterpillars poop prolifically, and they leave little pellets. So if you if you look at your plant, you see all these little pellets. Look around, look a little harder. You, you and should see, if, if it's caterpillars, you should see leaf damage. I mean, it's... Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. So, do you recommend a brand of soap for the roses? The problem there is that I went and just bought a spray bottle from one of the big box stores. Safer yeah. soap? I mean, it's, that's... Uh, yeah. Insecticidal soap, safer soap. Insecticidal soap. And... and I just sprayed them every time I went out the door and, and uh, had no problems for two years. And then uh, I hurt my back and, I, and there was about four months that I couldn't do anything. And I lost uh, too many plants in that, that little period. I, I lost the key line that uh, I had had for 12 years and I lost my roses. So I did not replace them. Some roses 
like your rambling old fashioned, what they call cracker roses, you know, they do okay if you ignore them. Um, knockout roses will do okay for about 10 years, ignoring them. Knockout roses are little thrips magnets. Are they? Yeah. That's yeah. probably what happened to mine they then. Them. <laughs> they will hammer them. Yeah. Okay. But your hybrid teas, you got to be in love with them. You have to be willing oh, to spend time, awesome. money, and chemicals on them. For the uh, fungal infections, Dacanel is a, a good start. Dacanel, yeah. Dacanel. That's an inexpensive product. It's fairly easy to get. It's uh, sold in most places. And it's very effective on just about all the uh, funguses on just about every one of the landscaping plants. So it's a good thing to have in your arsenal. Uh, so yeah, that, that answers Dacanel. your question, Anne Marie. Is Dacanil for the fungicide? Yeah, you should do better with roses up in North Florida. The further north you go, the better they're going to do. Although, are there Japanese mm -hmm. needles here? That was the death of roses up north. I haven't nope. seen any down here. No, nope. you are correct. They are not here. <laughs> There's they one thing we don't have. <laughs> We don't have that. We don't have a problem with kudzu. Um, we don't have emerald ash borer. Uh -huh. We do. We don't have spotted lantern um, flies or whatever they are. Yeah, what's the stink bug in Pennsylvania? It's Mar marmulated. Brown marmorated stink bug. Marmorated stink we only bug. have very, very few here in a couple spots so far. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the rains do cause the black. It's, it's the moisture on the leaves overnight that's really going to um, help that fungus get bad. And it's not daffinil, it's <laughs> dacanil. D-A-C-O-N-I-L. Yeah. That's it. And that is the uh, common name. And that's generally available at all the big box stores, the Lowe's, the Home Depot's, a lot of garden centers. So they're pretty easy to find. When I hear about black spot on roses, I think of pirates to where if they <laughs> shake your hand and put a black spot in your hand, that means, you know, you're next to die or something. So I always, the four roses have been told, you know, they've got Come the on. black spot. <laughs> hmm. Here we go. I'll defer to Lily on this one. How did Cleoms do here? Haven't heard of them being here, so probably not that well. I don't know. You look up their zone. I mean, if it's not for zone nine, A or B. I think I've seen them at the big box stores, which means well, which doesn't mean that they grow here. <laughs> yes, as I said, that doesn't mean. You know, one of the, the big problems here is that although we're zone 9A, we have winters for zone 8, we have summers for zone 10. So if, if you buy plants that are rated zone 8 through 10, you're covered. If you buy plants that are rated 9 to 10, there's a good chance that we're going to have one of those winters that will get them. And, and by the same token, if they're eight, nine, you're probably going to lose them in one of the summers. So uh, try and try and buy as many things that straddle the, the whole nine area, go from eight to 10. And, and then it, it's going to survive no matter what we have. I, I think since I've been here, uh, 89 was the last year that we went colder than a zone eight. It says 10 and 11. So it's for further south. I mean, so you can try it, but it'll, you'll probably. Unless you know, you've got a, a warm uh, microclimate, microclimate, you're probably going to be too cold. I mean, yeah. Well, Cle Cleomi. Cold. I don't know how it's pronounced, Corey. <laughs> um, I think it might be Cleomi. Okay. And Monique beat you to the zone and Teresa beat you to the fact sheet also. So <laughs> Okay. I mean, so it's just like any other of the uh, more tropical plants. 
you, we can have them and they'll do fine all summer, but you're going to have to protect it in the winter. Yeah, it's funny. We have some flowers that technically do well here, but it really depends on what time of the year you grow them. So for Cleomies, they're going to do fine here in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's the winter that's going to be the problem. Some of the northern um, dahlias and other flowers like that that grow up north can grow here during the winter. The summer is going to take them right out. We just Absolutely. get too hot yeah. steam for too long here. Yeah, I've seen dahlias in like the stores, the big box stores. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> And you'll see the big displays of bulbs, and I mean, even at Sam's Club and other places, and they'll have tulips, they'll have daffodils, they'll have all these. Guys, these things aren't going to grow here. They will once. Yeah. They'll come up and they'll flower, maybe once, and that's it. But yeah. hopefully everybody knows if you have a question about that, just tune in here 10 a.m. Thursday morning, and we'll answer it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those things that uh, it's a, a case of economics for the, the big box stores. If, if you buy a million plants and you've got a store in Miami and, and a store in Orlando and a store in Tampa and one in Gainesville and, and one in uh, Tallahassee, you know, you're going to spread that million plants out. Well, what does great in Miami is not going to be happy in Tallahassee normally. And, and the sad part of it is there are people that want those plants. You know, if, if, if you're running a store and, and people come in and say, I want an XYZ and you say, well, an XYZ doesn't do very well here. They go across the street and they buy one. They say, what's the matter with that guy over there? So, yeah. <laughs> so from an economic standpoint, it, it makes sense for them to sell all those plants. What doesn't make sense is for people to not educate themselves to know that uh, they shouldn't buy those plants. And, and the reason I know that is I blew a lot of money learning that lesson. I, I moved to Florida and, and that never did anything with plants, decided to do a little landscaping I went out and bought all the wrong things. I bought mm -hmm. what was pretty and what I wanted and what I thought should be there. And uh, basically everything I planted was wrong and it all died 100%. And uh, I, I got one of the uh, plant guides and found out that there were uh, different plants for different environments and different areas and, and started following the rules in the plant guide. And uh, that, that guide is wonderful. And, and that's the thing. If, if people come in, we'll give them a copy. There you go. That That is the Bible for newcomers as far as free, I'm Free, concerned. free, free. Mm -hmm. Free, free, free. Yes. If, if you don't have a copy, go to your nearest extension office and see if they've got any. We do. We give them away free. So. Mm -hmm. And, and we'd love the, to have you come by and get here's one. Here's the newer version. Don't oh worry if you my. don't have this one. Don't worry. The inside is almost identical <laughs> to this one. At least well, the, the, the plant side is basically identical on the plants with the, the guide they had 20 years ago. Yeah. It, it's not all inclusive, but it's very accurate. It's, it's one of those things that uh, if, if you look and it, your spot meets those requirements, that plant will work. And then it gets you going. It gets you up and running with something that's going to stay alive while you learn a little bit and, and uh, then ex expand out from there. And, you know, there there are plants that maybe you want this thing really, really bad, and it's not going to do well here under certain conditions. It, it isn't going to like the winter. It's not going to like this summer or whatever. Put it in a big pot, and, and if you have to, move it indoors in the, in the summer put it outside in the winter or vice versa, whatever. Enjoy the plant. Really have a good time with your gardening. I mean, it's all a personal thing and it's it's purely up to you. You know, if, if you don't mind replacing a plant <coughs> after it's done its six months of environment that it's happy in, then, then replace the plant. I don't care. Nobody else should bother. But um, mm -hmm. 
the, the thing yeah. about it is you need to do it. it it's fun. It, it's healthy for you. It extends your life. Uh, if, if, if you believe all that, go out and buy some plants and, and, and jump in and have a good time. The people that watch this, uh, I'm sure, are the people that are going to live a long time because they're enjoying what what life is all about. So I mean, look at Bernie. He's 120, and you would just never more know. More or less, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the name of this guide, Corey, is the Florida Friendly Landscaping Guide to Plant Selection and Landscape Design. And guess what? There's an app for that. If you went to the Florida Friendly Landscaping website, just put Florida Friendly Landscaping and pull it up from the University of Florida, you can um, click on to get a PDF of this, or you can find information where there's an app for your phone, which will bring up like one plant at a time for you, or you can even put in information about your growing conditions and it'll, you know, tell you these are great, you know, plants to try for those growing conditions. So I think it might be based on your zip code also. So you put your zip code in and it fine okay. tunes it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's many ways. Um, you can stop by the extension office to get one. Pasco probably has some too. Um, I have some here that I'd be glad to share with you. You can go to the Southwest Florida Water Management District web page if you are in one of their 16 counties go under resources for uh residents you can order one of these and it'll be mailed to you for free so Ooh. you know there are lots of ways to get a hold of of that book and as bernie says until he had his hands on that book he didn't have any success at uh landscaping so and I'm sharing information on how to get in touch with all of us, Lily's email and our office number. If you'd like to call here on a Thursday and speak directly with Bernie or hey, just swing on by in person. He's here. Mm -hmm. And there's my email. Please be sure to always follow us on Facebook. The short name is Hernando EXT. And check out all of our re previously recorded classes. We try to record all the different things that we do so it can be saved and then people can watch it in the future or if you're not free to watch it live because you're busy. It's okay. You can watch it at two in the morning in your pajamas if you want. That's fine. That's what I'm recording. No, not really. <laughs> they're all on Hernando County Government's YouTube channel. Lily has some like 115 or so. I just took one off. Oh, we, we just destroyed one because <clears throat> it had um, John emailed me while we were talking here. He has just taken it away forever and ever. I asked him to because it had information about the previous fertilizer ordinance and I didn't want people to get confused. So I might be down to like 114. <laughs> but we'll be adding more. So, uh, Teresa wants you to come by and see her, and she has a book for you. So, do you have your address, Dr. Lester? No, I don't. Here, I'm sitting here <laughs> looking at the comments. So, um, okay, Teresa can put it in, but it's 16110 Aviation Loop Drive in Brooksville, 34604. Very good. Thank you, Lily. We are at the edge of the Brooksville Airport Industrial Park, located right along Spring Hill Drive. I can look out my window and I can see Spring Hill Drive and I see it's getting cloudy out there also. It's supposed to rain or? Probably. It's, I mean, it's getting to be about that time. Yep. yep. And he is right next door to, if anyone knows where the post office is, at Spring Hill Drive and California Street, that traffic light there, that's where Bill and Bernie are sitting at this very moment. <laughs> and Teresa. It's and not under that bunker. Not <laughs> under the bunker thing. It's the down the road from it. it. <laughs> I don't know. They might move us there one day, but they haven't yet. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, they're not far. Bunker, that was a uh, place where they fired the guns to check them. <laughs> it's raining at St. Joan of Arc right now. Yep, right down the street. So, mm -hmm. great. It's heading this way. I got to go to lunch, and then I have to go up to the landfill, and then I have to go to Hernando Beach. So, busy day. Wow, yeah. busy day, yeah. Yep. Okay, well, hey, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. We will, I believe, all be back here next week. I know I will be. I will. I will. I'll be here. What okay. is what is today? Thursday. Today's the 8th. <laughs> yes, Thursday. so, yes. I'll be here next week. I'll be here. Bernie mm -hmm. should be here. I'm we're going to try to get on Thursdays. We're going to try to get Alyssa with... Um, Hernando County Mosquito Control on to answer. We almost had her today, questions. but she had an emergency. So, so we're going to try to get her on here. Lee, you're very welcome. Monique, I hope we were helpful. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, you're very welcome. Anne Marie, once again, congratulations with all the blueberries. That's great. They freeze well, too. So I'm sure you figured that out already. Well, somebody already knows what they're going to ask about next week. Eggplants Egg and diseases. Going to have the same answer as all the other vegetable <laughs> ones that aren't going to be growing in the summer. But we'll, we'll talk about eggplants next week. That's that's fine. Eggplants, are, eggplants. I well, first of all, I personally I like eggplant very much. They can be very productive. Uh, yeah, eggplants are great. They do really, really well here. I like the big purple ones, sliced mm -hmm. and fried. Oh, fried eggplant. Mm, so good. Like eggplant parmesan. Depends. That's one of those things that some it places could... it's great, some places it's not so great. You're right. It gets a little slimy. Yeah. Yeah, we seem to have a pretty good turnout today. Also, you know, just for everybody's information, the um, service that we use is called StreamYard. So we're all on here on the screen and it's broadcast to our Facebook page, the Hernando County Extension Facebook page, the Hernando Ex County Extension Facebook gardening group goes there and also goes to my YouTube page. So it's going to three different places. So if you're on one of them, you're only going to see the chat from there. But all the chats get aggregated and they show up on the side of my screen. And as you guys comment, I scroll down and we can click and we can show what you say. So there's going to be comments that will show and you'll see on the screen. But they might be coming from YouTube and you're on Facebook or vice versa. So, so you're all separate, but somehow all combined together. <laughs> Make sense? Clear as mud. Yep. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I think it is time for us to wrap it up here. Yep. And we will see all of you and hopefully more back here again next Thursday at 10 a.m. And bring your questions, bring your pictures, bring your eggplant, everything else. And we'll see you then. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.